The conference has been muted. All right, we will go ahead and get started. So first, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, The Importance of Cloud Computing Training. Um, I want to go over a few housekeeping items before we begin. So during the webinar, everyone's phones will be muted, as you just heard. If you have any questions, please enter them into the chat box, and we will address them during the question and answer portion of the webinar. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'd like to introduce our presenter, Mark Harlow, Regional Manager at ITpreneurs and Avnet Academy Partner. Mark, I'll turn it over to you. Great, Jane. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Wonderful. Um, perfect. Well, let's get started here. Uh, thanks once again for uh, joining everybody. This is a really exciting uh, topic and uh, one that we're very excited to, to be speaking about uh, with you all today. Uh, just quickly, I'll, I'm going to hand it over back to Jen to give a quick overview of the AvNet Academy highlight some of the uh, available uh, courses. I will then delve into what is cloud computing, which is interesting because everybody's talking about cloud, but really let's highlight what is cloud. I um, touch on who uses cloud uh, computing, the cloud market positioning, highlight the vendor neutral cloud computing portfolio. Um, that you'd be able to, to leverage, highlight the um, uh, Cloud Credential Council, and then we'll close it up with some questions and, and answers. As Jane had mentioned, also we can view the, the chat screen, so uh, if there is a question of um, relevance that I won't uh, cover at a later time, I can address that uh, in the chat box. Okay, back to you, Jen. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, so Avnet Academy, for over 25 years, Avnet has been helping customers realize the value of technology training through major systems implementations, integration, and development. When you choose Avnet Academy as your training pro provider, you get the following. Instructors with real-world experience. So many of our instructors have experienced deploying software and hardware solutions in complex environments. So you don't have to settle for instructors whose only experience with these products is in the classroom. Um, Avnet Academy has built a large network of partners and in-house talent to build a premier training organization. Through our partner network, we are able to offer you quality, flexibility, and customized training options to fit your needs. If you choose private on-site training for your group, we can customize the curriculum and classes based on your needs and the current skills of your staff. Avnet Academy has a global presence. We are present in countries all over the world. That means you can enjoy benefits like using Avnet training credits in different countries or have one education contact who can coordinate training for your employees around the world. We also offer several training delivery options so you can get your training your way. You can choose to learn from the comfort of your own home or office. We have public classes, so that enables you to participate in classrooms either physically or virtually. We have private classes, so those are offered at the customer site or at a training facility. We will help coordinate all of those plans. And then we also offer self-paced e-learning, um, and that comes with hands-on labs and office hours with the instructor. So you can find um, all of our courses of, are available at academy.avnet.com. And now I'll just give you a little glimpse of the cloud courses that we offer through ITpreneurs. You can find these courses on avnet.academy.com by using the search feature at the top right corner of the screen. If you search for CITP asterisk, you will be able to see all of these courses plus a bunch more. So as you can see, we have um, ITIL Foundations plus Introduction to Cloud Computing. We also offer a couple of Cloud Essentials classes that have the certification and exam with it, and then um, many more. So please, I encourage you to go to academy.avnet.com and um, hopefully book your next cloud course. And Mark will actually um, get into more of the cloud computing training here 
um, now as we move into the presentation. So, Mark, I'll turn it back over to you. Great, Jen. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll also highlight a couple uh, more uh, professional level cloud courses. And uh, Jen, by the way, congratulations on uh, being uh, included as one of the top uh, IT training companies from our training industry. Thank you. Uh, which is great. Okay, so let's get started over here. What is cloud computing? And, and I highlight this because if you uh, speak to any of your colleagues, uh, if you speak to uh, anybody at home, for example, everybody comes up with a different definition. Uh, basically from, from NIST, uh, which is the National Institute of Science and uh, of Standards and Technology, it's the uh, U.S. government organization. <clears throat> and they currently defined cloud computing as a model for enabling convenient on-demand network access to a shared pool of com configurable computing resources, network servers, et cetera, application services that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management or service provider interaction. Really exciting, right? What a great definition. And I highlight this because we're talking about networks, servers, storage, application services for uh, an organization and that are rapidly provisioned and released. So, so by highlighting those items, you can very quickly see that cloud computing touches every individual uh, and role within an organization in one capacity or another. In addition to that component rapidly provisioned and released, it's interesting because now we're coming across instances where people are within the business side of the organization can easily go online and provision their own services outside of engaging with the IT department, which brings a whole um, large amount of the implications if it comes to security, uh, implications in terms of support, uh, implications from a financial aspect as well. So, so cloud computing touches so many within an organization. Uh, and here, uh, from a Wikipedia definition of cloud computing, it's the practice of using a network of remote servers hosted on the Internet to store, manage, and process data rather than a local server or a personal computer. Very interesting. <clears throat> okay, this is pretty basic, but the implications here, once again, are very significant in terms of uh, how people uh, operate, how the IT department operates, et cetera. Just going back, because I find this slide pretty interesting. If we go back to the mainframe days, the client server environment, web based, and this notion in 2020 of utility based computing. I recall, as probably many of you all do as well, going back 10 plus years ago, that notion of the ASP model, along with there is a big push from IBM in terms of their on demand computing model going back. 15 years ago, uh, more or less. I think it's interesting now because at the time I think it was a bit premature in nature. And, and now in light of <clears throat> this notion of a utility, basically IT being like your electricity in nature. You turn it on and it works. Now I believe the technology has evolved significantly to support uh, such uh, instances. Who uses cloud computing and why? Businesses across the board, large and small, um, <clears throat> leverage cloud computing. Um, why? If we look at it, there's a you know, tremendous cost reduction, uh, universal access, there's a choice of application, um, and the opportunity to be greener, more economical, more flexible 
in nature as well. <clears throat> this is from IDC in terms of the cloud market growth. Really significant in nature. Um, go, growing to greater than a $200 million a year industry by 2016. It was interesting. <clears throat> I was talking to some folks uh, the other day, and sure enough, they're like, Mark, this is so interesting, this cloud stuff, as they call it. Because now when you read industry articles or just business type journals, the notion of cloud computing is referenced, right? Uh, outside of it just being, say, a PIO magazine for, or any other type of <clears throat> IT related uh, magazine where technology is mentioned. Now cloud computing is in Harvard Business Review, some of the McKinsey uh, pieces, in, in a lot of uh, business related uh, journals because it impacts so many within the organization. And where is this growth happening? 85% uh, of new software is now being built for the cloud. And a quarter of the world's application will be available in the cloud by 2016. And 72% of developers already report that cloud-based services or APIs are part of the applications they're designing. And if you look at it, it's cloud is everywhere. They're the key component in terms of making sure those apps run on our iPhones. They're a key component in terms of ensuring uh, availability and uh, various other components as well. So, so this growth is pervasive. And it seems as though now organizations are ready to adopt the cloud in one form or another. They could also be ready because to some degree, if you look at where cloud is versus say, the mainframe days and the client server days, the cloud is now being brought into people's personal lives, right? We have the notion of iCloud. Facebook, for example, uh, various other type of applications that we're using within our own homes that are now impacting and leading people to evaluate cloud within their organization as well. Here are just a couple uh, quotes uh, from a KPMG study. Uh, business executives are starting to fully appreciate the potential transformative value that cloud can bring to the enterprise. I think cloud and transformation go hand in hand with one another. Uh, as organizations transform, they're in a position to leverage the cloud to reduce their costs, increase their effectiveness and efficiencies, coupled with providing great service, something that I think is a great recipe for success. Uh, from a Gartner report, with cloud computing continuing to grow, to become the bulk of new IT spend by 2016. Training in cloud computing will help you and your clients better prepare for the growing demand of cloud services. <clears throat> Pretty interesting in nature that IT spend moving forward in the coming two years uh, will be centered around cloud-related technology. <clears throat> And the final quote, the total impact, economic impact of cloud technology is projected to be $1.7 trillion to $6.2 trillion annually in 2025. And that's by McKinsey and Company. <clears throat> so if you're a leading organization, research organizations, consultancy organizations, really touting the investments centered around cloud computing. <clears throat> And one of the interesting components is if you look at uh, uh, overarching uh, skill sets and the uh, market by people market uh, being equipped to support 
these changing uh, roles. Um, so here, for example, just a, a there was a recent uh, uh, IDC research study from January 15, January 2014, uh, which had interviewed 600 plus IT hiring managers, and the fact that this uh, the demand for cloud related positions will grow by 26 percent in the coming year. So that's pretty significant. Right? Pretty significant in, in nature. So, so hence the need for the formal education, the need for people to get certified and uh, get the required uh, understanding of cloud. The Cloud Credential Council, uh, which I'll highlight later on, I had highlighted that there are 1.7 million cloud-related jobs unfilled because of lack of certification. IDC reported last year uh, cloud computing skills gap is widening. There is an increased knowledge gap between required cloud competencies and availability in the market. So pretty interesting numbers here. And the cloud technology is driving change and growth in IT organizations. If you look at um, cloud, it's uh, one that I think it captured the end user community before it was embraced by uh, IT within the inter enterprise. Uh, if you look at it because of the notion of iCloud and Facebook and various other apps, I, that people were able to have at home, I, that I, IT was a bit slow in embracing I, cloud. Also, there are implications, I remember from a couple of years back, I, around security. I, that was, I think, the key barrier for enterprise adoption of cloud computing, and I really haven't even heard much of uh, a significant number of breaches uh, re recently, uh, for the most part. And here, just the demand for cloud skills is grown. Here's just another uh, chart in terms of the increase in uh, positions that that are available. Here are some that uh, we just pulled from from various uh, postings. But if you do a search on LinkedIn, if you do a search on Dice.com, or if it perhaps be Monster, you'd be surprised at the number of positions that are available for cloud-related uh, jobs in the market. So why become certified in a cloud-related course? Well, I, these courses are, are credible designed by subject matter experts who have experience in the, rele in the relevant field. These experts come from a consulting background. These experts are working with uh, some of the key technology vendors that are at the cutting edge of cloud-related uh, offerings. Uh, these uh, certifications are practical and uh, nature case study driven, uh, which is tailored for each course uh, to ensure that the learners not only learn but can also do as as well. And they're also accredited by the Cloud Credential Council, which is the only vendor neutral cloud uh, certification organization in the market. Uh, right, right now. And here's just a snapshot of the various cloud courses that are available. Uh, there's a base uh, awareness type course highlighting virtualization and cloud awareness. What is cloud computing? What is virtualization in the period of four hours? There's a foundational level associated 
uh, level cores, and those cover uh, virtualization essentials two days uh, in, in duration. There's the cloud essentials course as well, which talks about cloud computing pitfalls and uh, benefits of cloud. And then most recently, there's professional level cloud courses. These have been very interesting. Uh, these are based on feedback as to what the market is looking for, where they see uh, the most need uh, for these various classes. And there's five of them. There is the Cloud Solutions Architect, the Cloud Service Manager, Cloud Security Manager, Cloud Developer, and Cloud Administrator courses, which I'll delve into uh, and highlight what is covered in each of these courses, and also highlight as well where these courses uh, tie in to some of the product-specific courses you're probably uh, more familiar with. Uh, once again, the Cloud Technology Associate uh, Certificate that is uh, comprised of uh, the Cloud Essentials and Virtualization uh, Essentials courses. Moving forward for the uh, Cloud Professional Level courses, before I do that, I just wanted to highlight the accrediting body, the Cloud Credential Council. It's a global not-for-profit organization. It was set up as a vendor-neutral entity that I would solicit and garner support and input from the key organizations uh, that are involved in cloud computing, so organizations like VMware, like Citrix, like IBM, uh, for example, Cisco, and have provided input into this curriculum to ensure that it is as relevant as the latest in terms of what's taking place. It was interesting, for example, with the Cloud Security Manager course. This is one that is continually being updated due to the latest and greatest uh, trends that are taking place, evolution that's taking place in the market. And their website is cloudcredentialcouncil.org. Uh, each of these classes are three days in duration. There's an examination at the end of each course that is something that um, the individual is interested in sitting the exam. They are offered as a physical classroom course along with a uh, live virtual classroom course. Uh, due to the nature and interaction that takes place in the course, they're not available as a self-paced e-learning offering. The Cloud Solutions Architect course, it is uh, highlighting and for uh, architects, if it be technology architect, application architect, system architect, uh, enterprise architect. And the key uh, items that are covered in the course highlight the impact of cloud computing on business and IT architecture, uh, how to apply key engineering concepts of operating as a service, uh, and how to evaluate the cloud solution architecture. So this course is really interesting because I've I spent time this past year getting a better understanding of enterprise architecture myself. And from a cloud perspective, it's interesting as to how the evolution is taking place and just additional uh, items that, that need to be addressed or evolution that is taking place from um, how things have traditionally been done in the past. Uh, in terms of uh, course mapping, this is, uh, I find this slide interesting because the, the Cloud Solutions Architect course aligns with some of the Amazon Web Services courses, IBM courses, Microsoft courses, VMware courses, Cisco and Salesforce courses, which are product-specific 
in nature. And so these are complementary in nature uh, and support and align with these vendor specific courses. The cloud service manager course is uh, designed and it's uh, suited for IT managers, CIOs, uh, service manager, service management professionals. Uh, they are uh, for service architects, uh, technical pre-sales consultants, and uh, uh, IT professionals. So it's interesting because here this is talking about how the cloud supports IT service management initiatives. I'm uh, looking at analyzing an organization's strategic assets and capabilities to successfully design, deploy, and run cloud services, highlighting the benefits uh, and drive the adoption of cloud-based services uh, go hand in hand in uh, nature. And here are some of the uh, courses that uh, the Cloud Service Manager course aligns to. So there's uh, IBM Service Management, Microsoft Certified Solution uh, Expert, uh, and the Cisco CCSP Service Provider uh, course. The Cloud Security Manager, relevant for those people that are involved. You know, I think this is a, a real interesting uh, course and program because of the much greater uh, security implications that uh, cloud computing has. And there's been some instances, heck, we could uh, refer back to uh, Sony, right? I think it's Sony that uh, they were hacked into uh, this past week. Uh, if we look at instances in the past of accessing last year's target in terms of uh, accessing uh, people's credit card information, there are instances in the past with, uh, I believe, Social Security Administration uh, where they didn't have a secure environment. Uh, so, so security management is crucial for successful cloud adoption. Um, overall, if, if you look at things and if you see any significant growth, not to be an optimist here, but there's been significant cloud growth over the course of the past couple of years, but still there hasn't been a significant amount of instances uh, uh, taking place. Still, they do take place, and I think the Key cloud providers are really doing as best of a job as possible in terms of uh, protecting everybody's information. <clears throat> the cloud security manager course that ties into uh, IBM courses, Microsoft courses, and also uh, some Cisco classes as, as well. Just quickly, the uh, cloud developer course suited for application developers and cloud application um, developers. Uh, the learning objectives are uh, to identify cloud architecture patterns and development characteristics to distinguish cloud security and compliance fundamentals to understand deployment automation and elastic sizing of environment. This is for the folks within the developer community. And here are just a list, once again, of the courses that um, this class aligns to with Google, AWS, IBM, Microsoft, VMware, and Salesforce. And you guessed it, the last course is the Cloud Administrator course, and that's for uh, administrators. What a surprise, right? Uh, uh, so, so that's for network administrators, system administrators, database administrators uh, in nature. And to outline disaster recovery and business continuity strategies for cloud, which is very important. 
to explain performance measures, monitoring and optimization in production, uh, to illustrate uh, federated controls and strategies for multiple cloud and non-cloud administration. And the Cloud Administrator course, that ties to uh, the series of classes from Google, Google Apps Certified Administrator, Data Systems Operations on AWS, IBM Certified Administrator, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these are nice complements to, once again, the vendor-specific uh, courses that uh, are available in the market. And finally, just to uh, recap here, the uh, cloud technology is growing rapidly. Uh, definitely continuing to grow, uh, becoming more pervasive within organizations and uh, anybody you uh, speak to. There's a growing job market for professionals with cloud expertise. Uh, skills are in demand. Um, across the board, there's uh, organizations are in need of people who understand and grasp uh, key benefits and uh, challenges and opportunities with uh, cloud computing. Um, and it's an evolving uh, job role for uh, individuals and organizations. Uh, and so it's very interesting uh, time, I would say, for individuals to get up to speed on cloud computing for organizations. It's an exciting challenge as we are embracing files, trying to address the skills gap, trying to at the same time reduce their cost, increase their efficiency, provide better services to, to their customers. Um, at this time, I would like to open it up to questions. Uh, if there was one question, will the slides be provided to attendees? Yes, I will send out a link to the recordings. Um, does anybody yep. have any questions? I'm going to unmute all of the lines, so please The conference has been unmuted. There you go. Um, please feel free to, to ask any questions. I did get a, a few questions in while you were presenting. So uh, I'll go ahead and ask one of those in, while everyone thinks of their questions. Um, Mark, what type of organizations have been going through these courses? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's interesting in nature. We've seen a broad uh, uh, group going through the classes. So, so there's uh, individuals from the private sector, Financial services uh, have been um, going through um, the cloud courses. There's been uh, various uh, software organizations that uh, have been going through uh, the courses, and also a lot of government uh, uh, individuals have been going through the courses as well. The government uh, has been heavily involved in, in cloud computing. And so, so it's uh, uh, something where they're trying to get their folks uh, up to speed to understand cloud uh, and, the, and the benefits of cloud computing. So, so it really is a broad uh, brush in terms of organizations that, that are going through uh, these, these classes. So it's government. Uh, private uh, organizations, publicly traded organizations, and financial services and manufacturing across the board that, that we've seen uh, significant interest in, in the courses. Great. And then um, I know you might have covered this in the beginning, um, but I just wanted to ask again, so who has been involved in actually developing the courses? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been neat. So this uh, started, uh, there was a large financial services organization that was going through an organizational transformation, leveraging cloud computing. So as the top, one, one of the top five uh, global banks, they were 
um, um, a key uh, customer for some of these key organizations. And so um, at the time there was no there was only product specific um, education on the market. But since cloud touches so many people that this uh, financial organization was interested in providing a vendor neutral uh, type offering to their customer, to their uh, internal uh, employees. So, so it's interesting, and I highlight that because the folks from IBM, from HP, from Cisco, from VMware, and various other uh, providers, they provided inputs and expertise into the curriculum. There's also folks from some of the uh, consulting organizations as well. So really working with the key cloud folks, if you will, in nature and with the Cloud Credential Council and the fact that it's not biased towards one technology or another in nature. Because if, for example, I was going through a HP course on a type thing, then it would be all tailored towards HP technology and approach and methodology versus a vendor neutral approach in nature. Great. And then um, I had another question come in. Are the courses available online or in person? Sure. So, so the courses that I had on the left of that one slide, the uh, cloud and virtualization uh, awareness course, the cloud essentials course, the virtualization essentials course, those are available as self-paced e-learning along with classroom-based courses. And by classroom, that could be an on-site engagement. They can also be uh, delivered in a virtual uh, environment with uh, the instructor, so you still have that interaction. And then the professional level cloud courses, those are delivered in a classroom environment either on-site or in a live virtual environment. And the reason for that uh, being the uh, sole two delivery modalities is due to the interaction in the course. So, so we weren't able to, wouldn't be able to do the class justice by having it as a self-paced e-learning course due to the required engagement and uh, interaction that's required. Great. And I would just like to let everyone know that um, I will be sending out um, the recording, as Mark said, um, to everyone that registered. And um, within that email, I will also make sure to include um, the, some of the cloud courses that we've discussed on this webinar um, so that you guys can see the schedule and see all the different offerings they have, um, we have for 2015. Um, are there any other questions out there from anyone? All right, well, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today, and you will see the recording link here shortly. Have a great day.